Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Beauty Business in the COVID Era webinar. My name is Dewi, and I'm the MC today. We are pleased to announce that this year, Cosmo Beauty Indonesia will be launching a series of webinars. Our inaugural webinar on the spa industry was held last June 18, and today we are proud to host our second webinar on supply chain for Cosmo Beauty Indonesia entitled Beauty Business and the COVID Era. In the month of July and August, we will be hosting cosmetic and aesthetics webinars. For schedules and registration, please visit our website. Without further ado, allow me announce a few housekeeping rules and the program before we get started. We would like to inform you that all microphone and video have been muted. If you have any question during the presentation, please leave them down at the Q&A box on your screen. If there is any internet disruption during the webinar, please be patient and try to sign in again to the webinar. The program is as follows. Welcome remarks by Ms. Dewi Ria Sari, Master of Science and Pharmacies, Expert Consultant, DRS Consultant. Presentation by Ms. Fanny Murhayati, Marketing Director, Kantar. Title, COVID-19 Impact on Indonesian Consumer Attitudes and Behaviors. Ms. Iris Flynn, General Manager, St. Degrees, Hong Kong. Title, How Does the Beauty Industry Branding Have to Reinvent Itself During the COVID-19 Crisis? And Ms. Yuli Yulianti, Bachelor of Science and Pharmacies, Founder and CEO, Kalista Skidcare. Title, Business Survival Strategy During and Post-COVID-19 Pandemic. Q&A session, closing summary by moderator, and of program. Before we begin, please enjoy the Cosmo Beauty Indonesia 2019 video highlights. dari beauty company namanya Makeupan. Jadi aku datang hari ini ke sini karena pengen melihat e, banyak banget booth booth tentang mereka yang mensuplai pembuatan barang-barang yang terkait sama jasa kecantikan kayak misalnya untuk produk-produk salon ataupun produk-produk make up yang pastinya tuh berkaitan sama bisnis aku. Ini hari pertama saya di sini. Um... Cukup beragam juga pemain-pemain uh, di industri sini, jadi saya bisa tahu sebelum saya uh, menelusuri lagi lebih lagi. Saya di sini sebagai trainer director dari Laser Lash. Laser Lash ini bergerak di bidang eyelash extension dan juga lash filler yang baru diadakan di Indonesia. Uh, kami, menga kami memberikan supplies dan juga uh, academy untuk para salon owners uh, mengembangkan bisnis mereka. I started with Zorin the CBI in uh, Vietnam. In the in free and it was really good and our booth was so popular and your CBI team I still remember that Mr. Gary was really good and um, helped us a lot and this time 
We are so exciting to understand the Indonesian market. Saya mengucapkan selamat kepada Cosmo Beauty Indonesia, di mana untuk tahun ini penyelenggaraannya jauh lebih ramai, peserta standnya juga lebih banyak, dan tentunya tahun ini lebih sukses daripada tahun-tahun yang sebelumnya. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please allow me to introduce our moderator for today. Ms. Dewi Riasari, Master of Science and Pharmacies, is an expert consultant at DRS Consulta for Cosmetic and Pharmaceutical in diverse ranges area of R&D, product development, scientific, regulatory, as well as halal. She has more than 23 years of working experiences in prominent multinational and domestic pharmaceutical and cosmetic companies in Indonesia. She also served as guest lecturer of several universities and expert team member of local and regional cosmetic associations. Ms. Dewi, the floor is yours. Thank you, MC, for the introduction. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon to all participants. Welcome to Cosmo Beauty Free Webinar on Beauty Business in the COVID era. I'm Dewi Riasari and I will be the moderator of this webinar. Before we start, I'd like to give you a brief tour of the platform and the tools available to you. You have all been placed on listen-only mode for today's webinar. At any time during the presentation, you can submit questions through the question box on your control panel. The question is open for bilingual version, so you may deliver the question either in English or in Bahasa. Our presenter will answer a collection of questions at the end of the presentation. However, if we don't get your question in time, we will follow up the question via email. Now, allow me to introduce our speakers today. The, the first speaker is Ms. Fanny Murhayati from Kantar. Hello, Ms. Fanny. Hi, Ms. Dewi. Thank you for having Hi. you here to share your insight. Yes, and thank you so much. The second presenter is Ms. Iris Plain from St. Degrees, Hong Kong. Hello, Ms. Iris. Hello, Ms. Dewi. I appreciate your participation in yes. this webinar. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And the third presenter is Miss Yuli Yulianti from Kalista Skincare. Hello, Miss Yuli. Hello. 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 Thank you for thank you for your availability to share your business experience. So Sorry. without further ado, let us start the webinar. The first presentation will be delivered by Ms. Fanny Murhayati regarding COVID-19 impact to the Indonesia consumer attitudes and behaviors. Ms. Fanny is a marketing enthusiast with more than 14 years experience in consulting industry, developing business development strategy planning, and she has expertise in marketing front including digital marketing to support company campaign, creating insightful thought leadership publication. So I would like to invite Ms. Fanny Murhayati to start the presentation. Over to you, Ms. Fanny. Thank you, Ms. Dewi. Still waiting for uh, the day. Uh, thank you, Ms. Dewi, for your introduction. Hi everyone, uh, thank you so much for joining Cosmo Beauty Indonesia webinar. Wow, it's really great to see the ambience and the crowd of last year event uh, through the video. And uh, super glad to be part of this webinar. Um, I will share content findings and observation on and the impact towards beauty behaviors. Hope that I can also learn from other speakers to understand beauty behavior during pandemic. Next please. 
So uh, just quick introduction about Kantar and myself. Um, I've been working in marketing research and consultant for almost uh, 15 years and half of my working life I spent in Kantar. So been in touch with business players across industries, including beauty. In Kantar, we also talk with people such as ourselves as a shoppers to understand not only their shopping behaviors, but also understand their feeling, view or think about the brands or any situation such as this pandemic. So uh, next, these are my two favorite things to do that might be also relevant with this topic. I believe uh, many people are with me which are the first one is around us about social media, scrolling in social media, not only to connect with friends, but also to keep me awake with what's up there. And the last one, next please. The last one is about online shopping, especially in this pandemic. Many people like myself, both everything online, sometimes including groceries as well. Next please. So before uh, I share more about Indonesia market, I would like to share some learning from China as the first country that was exposed to COVID-19. During the pandemic, many spending for our home activities were declined, including beauty treatment, beauty products, or other entertainment thingy. Well, on the right side, you can see that the spending was more on health and nutrition. Next, please. How about after pandemic? We know that China quarantine uh, timing was around two and a half months. And afterwards, we see that some behavior stays. So these are the findings from Kantar China. Um, so some behaviors that stay such as the uh, people still use masks and it turns into daily habit and people pay more attention to the sterilization and also disinfectant. How about in Indonesia? I believe it's also similar with Indonesian case. Next, please. So um, Kantor is in touch and tracking the shoppers behavior every week. So uh, in this slide, we can see the movement or uh, towards FMCG or beauty behavior. So in this slide, we try to analyze the behavior from February until May, and we try to segmenting the timing to pre-COVID during outbreak and also during festive. Because in Indonesia, COVID pandemic was also happened during a Ramadan uh, period. From here, we can uh, see that beverage and foods are still growing, especially as people uh, are staying at home, while beauty and personal care uh, were softened. So the next question, what categories were in shopper basket? Next, please. There are three themes that can be seen in consumer selection during pandemic. First is categories that are under comfort eating food and essential categories, such as ready to eat or easy to cook, and also hygiene products um, for the prevention and nutrition as our immune boosting products. While personal care and beauty sectors are showing a softened uh, movement, especially for makeup. But we can see later how beauty players can engage to the consumers and react to the situation. Next. This is the information that we got from Google National Mobility Index. So there are two lines. The first one is red line and green line. Red refers to the residential, while greens refer to people mobility. So talking about mobility, personal care usually is related with people mobility. And from this uh, analysis, we can see that people start moving out from their home since early of June. This is the first step in resumption of new normal. Understanding this new normal, Kantar also talked to Indonesian to understand about their intention, including the beauty behavior. Next. It seems that people are preparing to be seen. So these are the slides that we asked to um, people about the intention on makeup, skincare, and also beauty professional. And we can see that the interest of grooming categories are slowly growing. So definitely still an opportunity for beauty players. Stay close to your consumers, understand all behavior changes and their purchasing patterns before, during, and post lockdown in defining your beauty strategy. Next. 
So how brands are actually adapting in current situation? As this pandemic gives challenge to many business and at the same time brings another opportunity for other business. Brands definitely need to think beyond the normal situation on how to reach your consumers, not only to survive in the short term, but also to keep growing in, in the long run. So the first one is about embracing online shopping. Retailer and manufacturers need to be creative in reaching uh, your shoppers. Given the rise of online shopping, some brands are actually increasing their digital presence through digital touchpoint and also social platforms. The second, uh, the second one is about home delivery service. So some brands are providing their home delivery service to reach their consumer. And the third one is about keeping, uh, keep engaging in current situation. Many brands adapt with creative ideas and relevant communication. And brands definitely need to promote positive and meaningful activities to support and keep engaged with consumer communities. Let's see one by one of these three points. Next. So before I share more on personal care and beauty, uh, let's see the FMCG retail landscape. So talking about the retail landscape in Indonesia, Offline definitely are still main channel with around uh, more than 80% of traditional trade and 20% for modern trade. Yes, online is growing even before the pandemic. Uh, but we can see here for personal care and beauty, it's also growing. The traffic growth reach for personal care itself more than 50%. So players need to be creative in reaching your shopper through online not only as the marketplace, but also to communicate with them. Next. This is the example of brands that are extending their service to home delivery or online uh, consultation. For example, Paragon companies through uh, Wada and Emina are adapting to current situation by providing online consultation and give free masks for uh, online order. And some other retailers also provide home delivery through WhatsApp or uh, WhatsApp order. Next, to understand more on beauty behavior changing, uh, to support on our analysis, we try to also check internally across counter employee, and more than seventy percent have changed their beauty behavior. Next, we try to segment the feedback uh, for makeup, skincare, and also home treatment. In overall, our beauty routine was disrupted. So uh, there are some verbatims that I share here. Uh, let me highlight some verbatims. So uh, some of them drop the usage significantly because they only uh, can use masks if they're going on site. But some still use powder, eyebrow, and also nude lipstick. For skincare, some don't feel the necessary to do the routine as they feel clean when at home. But some are actually trying to do do-it-yourself activities to fight with their boredom, such as using nail polish or coloring their hair. So this is also happened for the hair treatment. Some also do their own home treatment. Next. It seems that uh, some people are actually learning new skills when they're staying at home. So uh, we try to capture some communication uh, from some brands on relevant pandemic behavior. Some beauty players are using beauty ambassador in their communication. We can see Tasha Farasha and also Desti Yuvanti uh, from here. Next. There's, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, yes, it gave um, impact to some business, but we can also see opportunity because from our internal survey, people ask, uh, are also trying new beauty brands. So talking about new products, it's about how to promote and communicate your brands. These are another examples from beauty players that adjust their communication by highlighting, for example, eye focus makeup because uh, people can uh, see eyes, right? And also a light makeup for virtual meeting or even products that provide transfer resistance makeup for mask wearer. So please adjust your communication to address the new needs. Next. On top of celebrities, more brands uh, use social media to better connect with consumers 
and leverage online influencer to bring the brand experience closer to the consumers. So uh, this rising power of beauty bloggers help brand to build awareness and also influence path to purchase beauty uh, behavior and decision. Next, please. The last thing is about innovation. Um, as one of your level for growth is innovating. So in this current situation, many beauty brands are now making hand sanitizer such as Mustika Ratu, Warda, and also L'Oreal. And we can see uh, this also happen in other countries as well, not only in Indonesia. So uh, to wrap up, next please. There are some key highlights that uh, I hope it's useful for you, for everyone. The first one is uh, accelerating, accelerate your di the digital transformation mm -hmm. and strengthen your digital marketing plans, including connecting with your community-based e-commerce and also engage your consumer in current situation. Your communication strategy need to be relevant and also custom. And definitely stay close to your consumers, stay engaged with them. So we need to be companion in this tough time and we need to quick adapt with the changes. In overall, we should not overestimate the short time strategy, the short term strategy, while underestimate the changes that will be revealed over the time. Because the new behavior will be embraced and we need to monitor and we need to redefine our strategy, be agile and creative in reaching your shoppers. Next. So I think that is my last, last slide. So thank you so much all for listening and uh, feel free to get in touch with me. Hope it's useful for everyone. For the next step, I will ask Miss Dewi to continue the session. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Miss Fanny. Thank you, Miss Fanny, for your very comprehensive presentation. Now we will continue to the second presentation from Miss Iris Blaine with the title, How does the beauty industry branding have to reinvent itself during the COVID-19 crisis? Miss Iris mm -hmm. is the general manager of Ten Degrees Hong Kong, the independent global design agency. Her international background, as well as her experience in the field of skincare and luxury, enabled her to transform the needs of local players into effective design strategies. She is an experienced speaker in Europe and Southeast Asia for skincare topics. I would like to invite Ms. Iris Plain to start the presentation. Over to you, Ms. Iris. Thank you, Ms. David. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for having me. And thank you, Fanny, for that insightful speech of yours. Um, so next, please. So Sonogre is a French international creative agency with a strong presence in Asia. And next, please about the agency, so independent international brand intelligence and design firm with over 120 talents worldwide, created in uh, 1988. Um, and our mission is to create lasting values for our clients. Next slide, please. So we are uh, present all over Europe and Asia as well. And the aim for us is to be like to have offices all over Asia in order to have the closest insight, insight to the market and to be able to answer really local topic with the, uh, with the big picture in mind. Next, please. So our topic today is our relationship with beauty has changed beauty during the uh, COVID-19 era. Next, please. Our question, how does the beauty industry have to reinvent itself during the COVID-19 crisis? Today, every business is a health business. And of course, the beauty industry is the first in line. So we've seen with the data from Fanny that the beauty industry, because of wearing a mask, because of wearing, uh, walking from home and everything, has really, really been impacted by the virus. 
So the next slide, the future of design has hygiene at its heart. So you can see that on our daily behaviors and daily actions and the, the gesture now, the hygiene gestures are completely changed from a month to the other. Everything has changed and the design has to follow suit and to adapt the design. So next slide for the best in class. So we selected a few examples of brands um, like luxury brands, for example, who completely stopped everything. So as soon as they heard about the COVID-19, they, they completely like for social reasons, but behind it with the marketing reasons, of course, but uh, they completely stopped the, the way they used to work to create something completely new to adapt uh, and conquer the market. So the first one on the next slide uh, is LVMH. So Louis Vuitton converted three of its perfume manufacturing facilities to make hand sanitizers. The product has been given at no charge to French authorities and the largest hospital system in Europe. So on the next slide, you can see that um, it really triggered the conversation. So this is screenshots from Instagram from, from people from the hospital and hygiene industry. Uh, and also the, um, the factories that LVMH is branding somehow because they created a uh, hashtag. So you can see hashtag LVMH joins forces. So they are creating a discussion. So they're completely uh, triggering a new discussion and a new universe of discussion around the virus. And then the whole of the whole guidelines of communication that they were following so far is completely stopped and now every effort is converged on the virus. So you can see insides of inside the factories and you can see on the left uh, that people received uh, on hospitals, they received the LVMH hand sanitizer. And you can see on the next slide, the reason why. So first reason, to respond to a shortage of hand sanitizer, of course. So reason two, to position itself to its consumer, consumers and employees as doing what's in the public interest. And third, to keep their factories open and keeping employees coming to work and like to keep the movement going and not, not to stop the production or not to be on point zero, basically. So on the next slide, in a word is for purpose. Then on the next slide, we have the example of Clark's. So the Clark's Botanical hand sanitizer is now, is now the first product you see on the Clark's Botanical website before its best-selling serums and cream on the next slide. So um, they completely changed once again, like the best-selling and like the way they were advertising products before is completely gone. And now they're only advertising hand sanitizer, be it for, be it for consumers like you and me or in the hospitals, for example. Then the next example is uh, Shiseido. So Shiseido uh, is manufacturing, can you go to the next slide? Manufacturing hand sanitizer, which is to be supplied to medical institutes and facilities in Japan. And the company will disclose their formula for other companies to use in their production as well. So they're giving away the hand sanitizer, but also the formula so that everyone is looking up at Shiseido, right? In terms of design and product, like, quality of product and production. So it's as if it was like a kind of gesture from their side to, to competitors and to people, to human beings. And the last example is Coty. So on the next slide, the maker of popular lines of cosmetic, CoverGirl, hair care, Clairol, and fragrances, as Calvin Klein, for example, declared that they began producing hand sanitizer for pharmacies and to Coty employees. And this one, this was exactly when the, when the virus um, was triggered in Europe. And this was like, all of a sudden they took that decision and they were follow, following also like LVMH, for example, but they didn't think twice and they immediately produced new hand sanitizer that they were giving away for free. On the next slide, we can see what do these products have in common? Next piece is their pure design. The logo, the instruction of use, nothing more, nothing less. So there are two reasons for that. First, in terms of timing. So when you have a pandemic happening, all of a sudden like that, you do not have time to, to 
to think of a design, to think of a strategy. So you go straight to the point and you just do exactly what it needs to serve for. It, it has to serve for people and for public public health. So you don't you don't spend too much time on the on the design, uh, and also in terms of of cost, you don't have time for production. So you you need to to take what's available basically. So everything is very simple and very pure. So on the next slide, um, luxury used to be providing the highest quality products, and now it means that that and more. It means being involved in their consumer well-being and very quickly. So the impact of working from home on the industry. So on the next slide, given the realities of working from home, uh, physical distancing and mask wearing, it has become much less important to wear makeup and fragrances. So as Fanny was saying, like you have, you can only see the eyes and you can't, why bother wearing makeup or taking care of your appearance if you're, if you're working from home. So of course you still have, it is still very useful and consumers still taking care of this, but it's becoming less and less important with the working from home atmosphere. The skincare, on the other hand, is still very important and people spend more time at home for like daily grooming and everything because they have more time and skincare remains something really important as opposed to makeup, uh, which is less important in, in times of pandemic. So on the next slide, skincare, hair care, bath and body products, candles, aromatherapy and detox products appear to be benefiting from self-care and pampering trends. Sales of luxury hand soaping homes were up to 800% the week of March 16, 2020, when basically the pandemic arrived, as the country went into lockdown. So for this, we can see a lot of opportunities for brands to develop to develop those offers. So for example, a hair care brand can, can serve on the trend if I may, uh, of, the, of the pandemic and develop new products. For example, we will have like candles, which are, which can be related in terms of content of skincare, hair care, or bath and body products. And you can extend your product offer to, to please the consumers in the time of pandemic. So we're asking ourselves the question of what is the next normal on the next slide. And even though consumers expect to resume their pre-crisis habits, the industry has to change. So indeed, in the consumer's mind, it was, I used to have this, this routine and these habits before the pandemic. And then after everything is gone, I will just resume to it and I will just go back to my habits. But the thing is, first, the habits have changed, but also we, we changed in terms of like social, social behavior as well. So the whole trend of sustainability is going to be more and more important and is more something social that we need to, to keep in mind rather than just going back to our old habits. It needs to like completely change, to reshape the way we think. In terms of business opportunities, um, first we thought of COVID-19 will further drive clean beauty from a formulation and design perspective. So you can see on the next slide, uh, we will have touchless formats, clean products like spray sticks, which do not involve touching the product. So instead of having maybe a jar of skincare and you, you put your fingers on it every day and every night, then you will have something more safe in terms of hygiene and bacteria. So first we hear clean by safe, but then also clean with uh, formulation. So something which is more respectful for you, but also for the environment, because the whole crisis made us think of our impact as human on earth, rather than anything before actually it never happened like that. So this is the first time that we are actually thinking of our role and our impact on earth. The second opportunity that we think about is the immunity boosters with food supplements and vitamins, for example. 
So you can see on the next slide, uh, immunity booster sprays, vitamins, food supplements, essential oils will be part of the conversation with immunity boosters. Wellness companies such as Goop are on the rise thanks to this trend. So this, uh, just like the product, like the candles and everything that we talked about before, uh, these supplements are often proposed by existing brands. So for example, you have a brand of skincare, you, you have your own brand of skincare, and on the side you say because the beauty is inside out so you're going to have something for the outside beauty with the skincare treatment but also inside for the well-being and for like having being full of vitamins and having like a yeah basically a well-being from the inside and the outside so these these types of products those three products for example they can be developed on the side of a current brand then uh, the opportunity that every single one has to tackle is to go digital. In China, McKinsey Research has seen online revenue for beauty industry players rise 20 to 30 percent during the outbreak. And this is not this is only during the outbreak. And China is a good example of how like how to overcome the, the virus and how especially in terms of consumers' behavior. So how everyone because the retail is a huge, huge part uh, of the revenue already. But then um, how did the digital completely overcame? Like you don't, at the end of the pandemic, people were realizing maybe you don't need retail anymore. Maybe you just need um, pop-up shop or flagship stores or something like that. But do you actually need retail shop each and every day or can you just go digital, like dive into the digital uh, to take over the retail? And also on the next slide, create unforgettable online experiences. And as you can see on the next slide, for example, for the vitamin vitamin topics, uh, sorry, yeah. for the vitamin topics, you have a full experience. So instead of delivering, delivering, I would say, classic offer for skincare or for like hygiene hygiene products you completely like you rethink of it and you you take a step up on the on the gifting offer that normally brands have so here for example you have in terms of design you have like a, a specific shape specific colors and a lot of elements around it to to feed the universe of the brand and to, to make the consumers adhere to your to your brand values. And finally, we have also make it original and make it personalized on the next slide. So for example, you have the example of uh, Glossier and they completely um, surprised uh, themselves for the for the yeah, for this experience, for the delivery experience. So you have really personalized, you can personalize your products and inside the box that you order is like a box of surprise and then you have a lot of brand content that they, they developed digital because this brand is a US brand and at the beginning it was only meant to be digital. And the digital was so successful that they started to, to open retail shops. But it completely reshapes the, the, the relationship we used to have to skincare because as in, in the presentation from Miss Fanny, so we, we saw that the retail is particularly important for consumers to, to try the product, to get in touch with the product and to, to, yeah, to have something tangible and to, to try before. But then Glossier completely blurred that limits and even though this is only digital, then they had a different strategy and they first started with the digital and then they once they, they build their own community of fans like really core fans and they eventually open the shops so now um, with their digital experience they are really i would say the best in class because they their whole foundation is on the digital so yeah to summarize so make it original make it personalized and make unforgettable of, uh, online and offline experiences um, and think of all the opportunities in terms of packaging which are the shape of the packaging adapted to the new hygiene habits but also the content of it um, with more 
clean and pure products um, and maybe with opportunities such as immunity boosters, food supplements and vitamins. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening. To Should you have any question, I will be available later on with the Q&A session. Okay, thank you, Ms. Iris, for your very insightful presentation. So now we are going to the third presentation regarding beauty business survival strategy during and post COVID-19 pandemic. That will be delivered by Ms. Yuli Yulianti, Bachelor of Science and Pharmacist. Ms. Yuli is a young, talented pharmacist and entrepreneur who founded Kalista Skincare Clinic nine years ago. She had professional experiences in pharmaceutical industry for more than 10 years. Currently, she is responsible as CEO Kalista Prima Aesthetics and lead the company by successfully scaling the business. I would like to invite Ms. Yuli Yulianti to start the presentation. Over to you, Ms. Yuli. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Dewi, for introducing. Um, thank you for having me today. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, it was a great time for me for sharing what our experience uh, regarding to business survival strategy during and post COVID-19 pandemic. It was implemented in uh, our business uh, starting on March uh, until now. Okay, next please. Next please. Okay, firstly, I want to uh, introduce you to the Kalista Skincare Clinic. Uh, our core business, we have two core business in Kalista Skincare Clinic. It is a medical aesthetic treatment so we provide treatment for any skin concerns like acne, hyperpigmentations, loose skin, aging skin, and rejuvenation. And we also provide skincare and decorative products. Range of skincare products like uh, acne on daily series, brightening series, rejuvenating, decorative products such as a powder, lip cream, BB cream, and foundations. All those products are manufactured by CPKB Certified Factory and some of them have Halal Certificate. Next please. Okay, next. Okay, next. Yes. This is our milestones. Kalista Clinic, uh, the first Kalista Clinic was established in Bandung in 2011. Um, uh, it was it's very uh, basic skin treatment it's like a skin facial, chemical peeling, and then we have only skin, skincare, basic skin skincare like sunscreen, cleanser, and night cream. And three years later, on 2013, we launched uh, my own, our own brand for skincare products. The name, the name brand is C Skin. So uh, the C Skin is was registered uh, to Bed and Palm, and. Three years later, in 2016, we opened the sixth clinic in Jakarta. Uh, located is then Kelapa Gading and BSD, uh, BSD City. It was our challenge experience with some different type of consumers' lifestyle and more strictly competitors compared to West Java because the first well, the first time we have only clinic and West Java and then we we, the, we open to the greater Jakarta, Kelapa Gading, and West City. But it was also challenging for us. And uh, in the 2018, we launched the other brand of uh, decorative products, uh, it was CYX Cosmetics. So we, we have two different brands for two kinds of categories, skincare with skin and cosmetic. Uh, the brand is CYX Cosmetics. And now, in 2020, we have 13 clinics, eight clinics located in West Java, and five clinics located in Greater Jakarta, Jeritabek, Jakarta, Depok, Bekasi, and West City. Uh, and we have 72 skincare products with the brand C Skin and 21 uh, decorative products with the brand CYX Cosmetics. Next, please. 
Now we talked about the pandemic, how pandemic impact to our business. It was very shock because we have not prepared yet before it. Uh, I wanted to show you that the how decrease uh, of sales in, uh, as impact of pandemic and uh, there are government policy and we have to adapt about clinic service and operational change. Uh, you can see that uh, on March, uh, the government the, uh, government announced the first cases uh, in Indonesia, and following by the pandemic situation, especially in Jakarta as the center of the pandemic, uh, like campaign uh, like stay at home, working from home, and uh, school was temporarily closed, and some of business have to be restricted. So. Uh, we have to shortly apply new procedure of safety protocol. You will talk is it was very difficult for us because you know uh, it's very rare to find the PPA, surgical masks, um, hazmat, or anything else. It's very uh, hard to difficult in the market, but we have to because we have to protect our employee and also our consumers. Um, the worst situation is on April because uh, in Jakarta, uh, this is, uh, they are PSBB and following by Greater Bandung, Bandung Raya, uh, and uh, PSBB too. So mostly of our, cl our clinic clinics is uh, closed. We only uh, provide online consultations, online, online services. Uh, so it was very hard time for us to keep the business uh, still survive with the strictly uh, situations. The sales decrease on April uh, is by 56% in total sales. You can see that we have two uh, sales coming from product and coming from skin treatment. And the, even though the product is more and more stable, but uh, sales of skin treatment is extremely uh, down. So the total sales, uh, the decrease is by five, uh, 56%. Okay, next. Next, please, yes. This is our survival strategy during pandemic. The key highlight for me is, first one is keep positive mental and health of employee because it's very uh, important for us to keep positive mental and health of employee and we also stay close to consumers. Um, we break down to into uh, we break down the strategy into three phases, uh, such as adjusting, accepting, and aligning. Okay, adjusting is uh, consists of protect employees health because it is uh, number one. It's very important, and then uh, accepting is we have to stay close to consumer and help to fulfill their needs. Also, we have to play a role in fighting COVID-19 with a positive perspective. And the end, aligning. We'll prepare safety protocol. We realize that uh, this pandemic uh, could be stayed a longer time. So we have to enable and adapt to consumer needs change. Okay, next. The first phase is adjusting. Uh, the first one, we protect employees' health. We give them daily vitamin and food supplement to improve their immunity. Uh, and we also give them vitamin C injections to support uh, their immunity. And we, 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 the work hours in SIF. We change the work hours in SIF because uh, a pandemic is to be social distancing and physical distancing so uh, we, we, we limit the number of employees that work in the same times and also for consumers we do a safety protocol uh, like consumer screening before entering the clinic and our room equipment and so disinfected between uh, consumers so. and skin, uh, skin treatment procedures change because um, some of skin treatment it was not provided uh, by us because it's too high risk, too, too high risk uh, in the COVID situations. So we make adjusting this time. Next. In the accepting phase on April until mid of May, 
we have to stay connected to consumers and keep in their engagement. We provided virtual consultations with doctor and we have online medical record of consumer. Doctor can give consultation either work from home or work from clinic. Even clinic were still closed, beside product purchase, consumer could buy a voucher of treatment. So we provide like voucher treatment, it's like pre-order, so the consumer can buy with the special price, a special price and then they can redeem uh, at the time when clinic uh, opened. For any specific and moderate to severe skin problems, uh, consumers can consult to our dermatologist, special, specialist colic clamine, my hotline number is available every day from Monday to Sunday. And then we do Q&A live interactions with consumers using IGTV and professionalism for their skin problems. Next. The second one in assisting fast, we deliver meaningful information and uh, entertaining content because uh, the pandemic, it was um, very stress we the pandemic make make us more stress and we have to keep the mental health during quarantine during stay at home so we we have to give customer a positive perspective and valid information no hawks related to pandemic so we educate them and also share happiness by online games and giveaway using social media, Instagram, and we build the engagement and interactive with consumers. We also make a live uh, tutorial, such as a uh, live makeup tutorial and live talk with influencer. We have a brand ambassador, Saskia Diamika, so we uh, do live, live talk with influencer in IGTV. So uh, the consumer, or the follower, can talk uh, directly with her, with the influencer, and she can talk her daily activities during quarantine, during, during his stay at home, and how to always be optimistic and positive thinking. Next. And then we have to adapt to new customer needs. As we know that the, uh, during a quarantine, we cannot go anywhere to clean it, to, skin, uh, to treat our skin. So we have to launch some product that can substitute the uh, skin cleaning treatment. We launch an at-home uh, face mask, home peeling solution to help skin uh, rejuvenation and uh, face masks mask have to uh, help to the skin uh, exfoliation of, of customer. And we also provide free fabric mask and hand sanitizer for customer. And uh, we gather live shopping with special price products. And then we provide immunity booster treatments such as multivitamin infusion, injection, and oral vitamin D. So who, uh, for a customer who need increase in their immunity, they can get our services by safety protocol. And uh, we keep in interaction with consumer and make them easy for purchasing uh, by our channels online. Okay, next. Next, please. Yes, this is corporate social responsibility. It is uh, important for us as a brand and that keep in social responsibility. We donate PPA or APD to several hospitals and cooperated with Percosmi uh, organizations. And we also support the POM Peduli for Jabar Bergerak. With other cosmetic company, we donate uh, like surgical masks, hazmat, uh, and anything else uh, of personal protective equipment. Okay, next. Next, please. Yes. The third pass is aligning. This pass is we realize that uh, uh, the, the we have to, to face the new normal situation because the pandemic is still going on and uh, it takes a long time. So we have to adapt to new normal and change uh, customer behavior. After eight, in the, at the end of May, uh, since uh, government is uh, more um, release or PSBB is, has finished from, for some area, we started for reopening clinic. Clinic reopening with well-prepared safety protocol. And 
uh, we prepare of uh, we ensure that employees help by serological tests of SARS-CoV-2 and thanks God alhamdulillah uh, the result was non reactive of our employee and then still going on daily oral vitamins and we do online marketing to deliver products so this is uh, the first is more more we we, we 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 are more ready to serve better to to keep health and uh, uh, prevention of COVID uh, spread to customer. Okay, next. After that, this is the last one I think. Uh, business strategy post pandemic. What we are going to in the long time, in the next year, and the future. Um, we have three. We have three um, strategy. Uh, we we. We have planned for as uh, for post pandemic situations uh, for treatment service. We have a plan for expanding in health service such as vaccine package. We are discussing with our doctor to make some package or some uh, uh, yeah vaccine package for the consumers, and then uh, we have, we provide home service package uh, because uh, for some of people still want to stay at home. So we provide home service package and in product development, we will launch product uh, of at home facial kit and DIY categories like sleeping mask, sheet mask, and new home peeling solution. So the customers still, uh, still can um, keep their, their skin health in the, at the home by our products and still can a consultation with uh, us, with the doctor by online. And we will launch personal care like liquid soap, hand cream, and hand moisturizer. Uh, the last one, this is a go digital. We have to improve, uh, even though before we, we, we have done doing online uh, marketing, but now in the future, we have to improve better and better in uh, digital, like new application. We have already uh, built a new applications that more interactive and more um, engaged with the consumers and we improve the e-commerce by web store. So uh, it's not only survive, but we have to grow our business and uh, we can compete with uh, the worst situations. Next, please. Next, please. Okay, I think uh, it's all my sharing today. Uh, you can find us at www.kalistaskincare.co.id and please follow our Instagram, Kalista Skincare, and stay beautiful and healthy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Julie, for sharing your business milestone during the pandemic. Now we are going to start the Q&A session. We already have a list of questions from Q&A panel box, and I have selected relevant questions for each speaker. Okay, ready? We have all the speakers here. So, yes, uh, yes, miss. Yes. Okay. So we start with the first question to Miss Fanny. Yes. Okay, so we have this question for you. Mm -hmm. How to open market in this pandemic? Do you have any suggestion? Um, thank you for the question, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Dewi. So uh, I think it's challenging situation to uh, many business players in COVID-19, yeah, during COVID pandemic. And uh, like we see as well, and we feel as well, it impacted many business. But at the same time, it's also uh, an opportunity for other business. And uh, like I shared before, even the beauty market is a bit softening uh, and people are adjusting their uh, expense to the essential category. So back to your question in terms of how to open the market in this pandemic, as long as we understand about the situation happen currently, and uh, we need to find the right communication. I think that's, uh, that will be the important point right communication that can help Indonesia in this situation. So if we have product and we need to uh, communicate what will be the advantage of our product or our business that can help uh, people and consumers in this pandemic. 
Um, we also did COVID uh, calls survey from Kantar, and it seems that uh, women are remain a lot more health concerned even after the uh, post lockdown. Yeah, so that's why um, we also see that there are several businesses such, such as offering the home treatment at home. So it's also increasing. And also we see that home treatment vaccine, for example, for a new mom that's uh, perhaps afraid uh, to go to hospital. And I also see their business that offering this kind of business as well. So the important point, how to open a market. So create the relevant communication that help consumers in this situation so they can also use your uh, business. So it means, uh, yeah, it means that yeah. there's still opportunity even though in we are still in the pandemic situation, right? Yeah, but though the okay. market is softened, yeah, but yeah, you miss. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. So uh, we are going to the next questions to Miss Iris. So we have question, does branding still play important role in making purchasing decision during the COVID pandemic? Yeah, so what do in, you think? in terms of branding, we have two, two different trends. So we have the trends that we were going forward before the pandemic. So something really, really well thought and quite elaborated and developed. And at the same time, we have the trend, trend during the pandemic of something really naked, I would say, something really pure and natural. So during the pandemic, for the brands which are developing, especially for the pandemic and for the new product development during the pandemic, is going to be something really simple, really pure and basic, I would say. But then for after the pandemic, once we have more time to develop, like to, to, to elaborate new strategies for product development, then we're still going to have at heart something really pure and simple and natural, like to have as less noise around as possible to, to emphasize on the very pure and um, efficacy uh, side of the product. So once the pandemic is done, we're still going to have that, that purity at heart, but a little bit more developed. But yet that purity, it requires a lot of design thinking. Like, is for example the, the example of for another industry, but for the example of Apple, for example. So you have something really, really pure and neat and nothing more, nothing less. Yet it requires a lot of design thinking behind. And for the for the skincare industry, for the beauty industry, is going to be the same. You're going to have something really pure, really simple, really straight to the point and highlighting efficacy, um, but with a lot of design thinking behind. I see. So uh, the branding is still uh, important, but it's need to relevant the existing situation, right? Exactly. Okay. Now we are going to the next question to Miss Yuli. I have several questions for you. This is a lot of list questions. I'm quite oh, yeah, confused really? that I choose one. Uh, how to increase sales during a pandemic? Because you are really uh, from the business side. Probably you can share more. Okay, thank you for the questions. Actually, uh, before to increase the sales, uh, the important thing that we have to survive Okay, and then we think about to how to increase sales uh, gradually during a pandemic. The first uh, thing we have to find what is the customer needs because there are some new customer needs, uh, the chance of customer needs, so we have to fulfill what uh, their needs. Uh, we have to uh, ensure them that uh, we, we do safety protocol, so uh, we we provide the safety protocol uh, during the skin clinic treatment and the consumer feel safe, uh, feel um, secure uh, uh, to, to do skin treatment in uh, our clinic. Uh, so the, the sales is, will be gradually increased because the, um, this, the new normal is uh, give the consumers um, more confident, a little bit confident to go out from their home to go to the clinic. But we still do limited time, limited um, procedures. Some of the um, treatment uh, we cannot provide because uh, it's too high risk and so on and so on. So uh, we, we protect our uh, employee, our team, and we protect our consumer. 
I think uh, the, the trust of from our consumers it will be increased. In, it will help increase our sales uh, gradually uh, right now. Okay, so in the work that. Um we need to do a set of uh, protocol uh, mm -hmm. related to uh, safety, health, and hygiene. Yes. Uh, to support uh, the increment of sales, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Exactly. Thank you for the answer. Now we are going to the second round of the question. So I'm back to Ms. Fanny. Okay, you have you. the second question. Is the price matter in this pandemic era? Does lowering our price to customer, such as promotion of discount, uh, will work? Okay, thank you for the question, uh, Ms. Dewi. So uh, I think talking about price strategy, it's always uh, be the discussion for any business. And uh, I believe it depends on who, who are your brand's target. So whether you are targeting premium market or you are targeting middle or low uh, consumer. I believe it's okay. It's it's okay to play in premium market, but you need to communicate why you are premium than other uh, other brands. What is your advantage? Something like that. But if you're also playing in mass product and targeting middle and low SES, so price is definitely one of the key strategy that we need to uh, think. So price strategy is not only about reducing your price, but can also uh, be relevant in terms of pack size strategy. So let me take the example of Garnier uh, Micellar Water. Yeah. So uh, this product, they keep growing by offering their mini pro, uh, their mini pack. So uh, this pack size adjustment is actually happened not only from beauty uh, category, but also in other sector as well, such as food. So we can call it like premium affordable pack size. So that's why to answer, yes, price perhaps matters, but it depends on your uh, target buyers. But price can be relevant as well to your pack size strategy. And don't forget to communicate your premium minutes. <laughs> I see. Okay, it's very clear. I think that's a good uh, suggestion. Okay, now the second question to Ms. Iris. Uh, you're talking about the branding, the design now. Uh, there is a question about how to reinvent the service business. Mm. Okay, thank you, Ms. Dewey. So um, to reinvent the service business, we need to, to think of a few things. So first we have the delivery system, the service for delivery, then the retail, how, how the staff on a shop will interact with the customers and here uh, this is what just like Yuli was saying about uh, developing protocols so for example I'm taking the example of uh, porcelain which is a brand from Singapore and they have a spa so they can they propose um, treatments like facial treatments uh, on a spa and Singapore was even though Singapore was doing well at the beginning of the pandemic uh, after they, they had like a second wave and it didn't look well for them so they had to to take extra measures of safety um, and for that they developed new protocols so taking the temperature um, then having like separate rooms uh, like norms of hygiene and things like that and they really need to advertise that to every single customers uh, on the site but also on their social media in order to reassure people so I would say to reinvent the service business, you have to communicate a lot about all the steps that you take to, for safety, basically, for your, for your customers. And then in terms of for new businesses, for example, for architecture, uh, the architecture of retail stores are, are going to be impacted for sure with the virus because you're not going to, to touch the products the same way and you shop. you're going to be stressed every time because you're going to touch products and then you're going to have interaction with the staff and the products so things will change in terms of of furniture in terms of uh, how to say clients like how they move and how they behave and how they react to the products around them so this for architecture for sure is going to change for even for digital so when you order something the service for delivery system 
has to change uh, as well. And then in retail for the staff, for the, the behavior and the attitude of the staff, it needs to change as well with uh, developing new protocols to ensure and to reassure the customer that this is a total safe area for them. Okay. So in brief, the, the thing that we need to take into account for the service business is to the employee and also the, the customers. Mm -hmm. But we also need to take into account the, the behavior change of the customer. I yeah. think that. Thank you. Thank you. So we are going to the next question to Miss Julie. So how can we survive in this business while pandemic? So what is your experience, Miss Julie? Probably you can share with us. Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, this business is still have an opportunity, I think, because uh, besides beauty, uh, we provide also health, health services. Uh, because not only uh, aesthetic skin treatment, but uh, also like uh, the medicine for, for skin treatment. So it still have an opportunity uh, during pandemic. Uh, and we, uh, I, I, I took care of, uh, a lot with the, with the team. Uh, we are uh, going to discuss what, uh, what, uh, uh, what have to do to this uh, situation uh, because the, Supported by team is very important for me. Uh, again, I have to say that the protect employee, protect employee is very important. So, uh, and then we have to stay connected to the customers. Uh, we provide any channels to uh, for customer to contact us, and uh, we have to um, fulfill their needs. Uh, and then we uh, improve uh, our uh, online digital uh, and uh, in, uh, yeah the, the products we we launch uh, the short, we shortly launch a product that that uh, customer needs like hand hand moisturizer and then um, for home home treatment yeah from from for home treatment like uh, face mask uh, so they can. Uh, they can still at home without going uh, anywhere, but uh, their skin is uh, still uh, health. And um, yeah, I think this is the key. Uh, what our experience to survive in this business uh, during this pandemic. Okay, it sounds still very optimistic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Still have an opportunity in this business. I think. Uh -huh. A good, good. Well, this is very positive tunes. So now we are going to the third round of uh, questions. So I'm going to Miss Fanny for the third one, third question. How to increase engagement during pandemic and how to increase sales? Probably you have some suggestion, Miss Fanny. Okay. Um... I think the question of how to increase engagement during pandemic, uh, like we mentioned uh, previously, that the engagement need to be relevant with our day-to-day -day, uh, activity as well, right? Uh, like, for example, during the lockdown, we feel really, um, what is it, really uh, bored perhaps, and sometimes what can help consumer to be positive? I think uh, that kind of engagement, so back to daily routine as well. Because we also did survey to Indonesia and 97% of consumers still want brands to continue advertising and demonstrate how uh, the brands can actually help the consumer every, in everyday life. Because uh, this lockdown definitely a new normal for us. Uh, perhaps I can give the example about home delivery like I mentioned before. Like the Korean barbecue as well, they give the uh, home delivery for Korean barbecue. Even if uh, people like uh, Big Big Bad Wolf, perhaps uh, someone know about Big Bad Wolf, and they also available in the Tokopedia during the event. So players uh, need to be creative in reaching your consumers by uh, communication or in terms of the way how uh, consumers can buy your product or reach the product. And perhaps use beauty bloggers can also help the business interacting uh, in reaching other target as well. So increase engagement by bring to uh, the current situation. The okay. Content. 
Okay. Very clear. So it still need to be very relevant with the... Yes, very relevant. Okay. Okay. Great. So uh, the next question for Ms. Iris, about the concept of clean beauty that you have explained in your slide. Does this concept shall be developed in the long run business or just temporary? Yeah, my answer is definitely yes. So even before the virus, uh, we were seeing um, development of sustainable packaging. So rather than plastic, you have like recycled pack, uh, plastic or like new, new ways to, to, to be more sustainable for packaging. And then everything was forgot, uh, forgotten sorry, with, the, with the virus because of the rise of single use plastic for more hygiene. But after, because this is the most easy uh, solution for hygiene solutions. But then for after the virus, uh, we reckon that the sustainable packaging is going to be back on track and to, to be innovative in order to have something both safe and hygienic and also sustainable. But definitely the wave, like the, the trend of sustainable and green packaging that we had before is going to go on and to, to build a legacy. So it's still relevant uh, for post-pandemic as well, right? Okay. Okay, good. Now, uh, the next question to Ms. Yuli. What do you think the most important in anticipation of this pandemic in the long run business? Yes, uh, thank you. Yes, we have to prepare uh, because the pandemic maybe will go in longer time. Uh, the most important thing maybe we have to go digital uh, more improve because uh, digital uh, it has more borderless. Mm -hmm. So uh, even pandemic still going on, we can uh, reach the consumers more widely and uh, uh, without mm -hmm. any uh, restriction, uh, they have to go to clinics. We can uh, improve the digital. Yes, we are doing um, improving our digital right now for um, like e-commerce and applications uh, because uh, they they can increase uh, our our sales, uh, especially in the, uh, during pandemic uh, like like now. Okay, so digital is very key for the long run, yeah. Even yeah. though yes. the post pandemic over, then it it will remain uh, sustainable for the business. Yeah, yes. Yeah, besides, beside I have mentioned before that we, we have to product development, still launch the product, new product, and uh, some package, home, home service package, but the digital is uh, most important, I think. That's for the part of service, right? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, good. Now, uh, back to the uh, fourth round. So I'm going back to Ms. Fanny. Uh, there is a question for the beauty company who has planned for product launching. When do you think is the best time? Within okay. this pandemic or after? Or what, is, what, what do you think? Okay. I think it's a difficult question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I believe uh, we need to monitor uh, the situation because even we don't know when it will we will back to the previous normal. So like I mentioned, all of the uh, new behavior, we need to embrace all of the new behavior changes. But I think as long as our product can be relevant with the consumer this time, it doesn't stop us to uh, be loud in terms of promoting our product or to launch our product. And again, it needs to be relevant with the current situation and with what uh, the consumer needs currently. I think uh, perhaps that can answer your question, Miss. Okay. And I still remember with your previous explanation, we also need to uh, understand what is the uh, target of yes. the, our consumer target, right? Yes, agree okay. with that. Okay, good. So the next one is for Miss Iris. Uh, the question is for the online shopping experience, which is more important? Is is it the product key message or uh, design of the online platform? What do you think? <laughs> so um, both of them work together. The I would say the most important thing is the the product key message, like how to 
like the positioning of the product and then the packaging of the product itself and then the online platform is more um, like how to make something really smooth and seamless in terms of consumer experience but um it's more secondary compared to the to the product uh, key message yeah because if you have a beautiful online platform but a wrong something which is not adapted to the consumers and which doesn't uh, answer the concerns of consumers then even though you have a beautiful online platform is not going to sell by itself so um, the key thing is to have the, the positioning of the product and a design like a well-designed product and quality predictive product and then is more a technical aspect of it uh, the online platform and they don't go without the other but uh, the product positioning is more important than the online platform i see okay i think it's very clear the answer so i think i'm going to the next question for miss julie what would be your suggestion for digital marketing strategy can be done to build a brand image? Probably you have uh, some experience on this part. Okay, um, for digital marketing strategy, we have to build a, a connection and engagement with the customers with any, uh, any media, social media channels of us, like uh, Instagram and then fans, uh, fa Facebook fan page, and then uh, web store. Uh, so uh, we can't uh, deliver our message, our our brand awareness to the consumers. Besides that, we're also doing uh, some ads, digital marketing ads. Uh, during pandemic, uh, I stopped the the cost of, prom of promotion, uh, honestly, because we have to maintain the cash flow. But uh, now we have to start to do ads of digital marketing because it's it's very um, help uh, helpful for us to increase the inside impressions or something like that, the engagement that uh, can um, make the consumer to uh, engage with us and uh, we, we have to do it uh, regularly and consistently ads and then content and then um, uh, social media interactions like that so um, the consumer now and see us by the social media and the, the brand image our our brand image uh, can be perceptioned can can be uh, perceived by the consumers with the uh, by the digital marketing. So uh, it means that we need to share our concern also not only to one platform but also divide uh, our concern to several digital platform. Do you yes. Think? yes. Okay. And uh, and there are two two kind of digital marketing: the organic without ads without a uh, course, we do regularly um, digital marketing, the content, provide content and social interactions. And the second one is we have to do the ads. Okay, thank you, it's very useful. I think um, it can be also exercised by the audience, yeah? yeah. Okay, we have uh, the next question to Miss Fanny. Yeah, uh, this is about data. Do you have any information on the growth of the beauty business for each of the offline and online channel during the pandemic era uh, for March to May period? Uh, yes, we do have the data, but unfortunately I don't have it ready by, by now. But in overall, uh, I think I shared the traffic growth before in my slide. So for uh, personal care and beauty, I think uh, for offline, the traffic growth is a bit softer, uh, double digit for uh, beauty, I think around minus uh, 10%. While for the online, it's growing double digit as well. Traffic means how many people actually purchase something uh, from online or offline and how frequent is it? So we see the traffic as well. But to answer your question in terms of value and value, uh, value growth, yes, we can definitely uh, answer that question perhaps offline, yeah, Matt, uh, yeah, Miss. Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay, clear. So, Miss Iris, the next question is for you. 
Um, what would be your suggestion for digital marketing strategy can be done to build a brand image? You can use them. This one's a tough one, <laughs> but just uh, it would be, I would recommend to have a very seamless experience, really, really smooth and seamless experience for um, phone, like mobile and uh, desktop, like regardless of the support that you're using, which is the first like technical thing that needs to be achieved first. Um, and then all about the experience. So how, how to engage the consumer, like trying to understand what engaged him in a retail environment, but in a digital environment. So to provide experiences and to, as the example that we, get, we had with the vitamin brands, for example, or the glossier when the makeup and skincare brand, and they are, um, they are taking the digital experience to a next step and then like by creating the experience, like having a real engagement from the consumers, be it for some features on the website or maybe engaging the consumers themselves. So giving a voice to the consumer. So on the website, I feel that I'm the target and I have my voice to give, like to really give a voice to the consumer on the website or on the digital digital supports that you have. Mm, even though I think it's not too easy, yeah, because we need to, you know, grab the engagement through the visualization. I think it's not so easy. <laughs> what do you think? Exactly. Okay. So we need to be very creative on, you know, designing the digital marketing strategy and uh, how to um, escalate it into the real uh, platform, right? Yeah, but like first okay. being really uh, irreproachable, like really perfect in terms of design like how because the design is going to be the first thing that you're going to see mm -hmm. so, the, the so it means uh, the engagement is more close to the visualization engagement uh, more close uh, to the, uh, the engagement is uh, more to the visualization mm -hmm. through the visualization of the yeah, uh, yeah, the, the, the digital platform yeah yeah okay. the, the first thing that you're going to see and it's just like a shop, for example, in a in a in the retail world, uh, you're going to be more eye catching. Your your shop is going to be more yeah. eye catching next to the other one, and you're going to win because you're going to be more yeah. visually created. And for websites okay. and for digital platforms, it's exactly the same thing. So, first, the first contact that you have with the customer is going to be a visual contact. So this needs to be right on point and creative and unique. And then you can you can go you can dive a little bit deeper uh, with the experience and the engagement and giving a voice to the consumers, etc. I see. Okay. So clear, very clear. And uh, next one for oh, Miss Yuli. Should we decrease our price to customer on beauty service and treatment when we also provide them with uh, uh, clean and hygienic health protocols? Because since this pandemic, we need to pay extra for the health hygiene protocols. What do you think? Uh, yes, thank you for the question. Yes, we do the promotions. We do promotion for consumers. But uh, we have to select and to find what the promotion that's related to the, uh, the situations. Uh, such as uh, we give them uh, free hand sanitizer or free uh, fabric mask or we, we, we give them the customer the discount after the uh, any purchase like something like that and uh, I think uh, for, for right now we have to focus to uh, grab the consumer to to come to into clinic and then to keep uh, uh, their uh, their purchase to us. Uh, even though we have to maybe a little bit uh, decrease our profit, maybe. But the important thing that we have to uh, keep the trust of our customer and to keep our relationship uh, with customer with uh, any discount, any promotions, uh, especially related to the uh, these situations, something like that, maybe. Okay really clear so we, we just manage the profit 
fight. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's a yes. kind of maybe later on consequence. Regional. Yes, uh, later on, gradually we can manage our cash flow or financial to make some strategy for adapting a new uh, situations. Okay, thank you very much for your suggestion, Ms. Julie. So I think we still have uh, five minutes, so this will be the last question that we can answer. So the last question is directed to Ms. Fanny. Okay. So could you explain more about 73% respondent that changed their beauty behavior? Ah, okay. The I one in that. your slide. Yes. Yes. So the 73% actually refer to our internal survey because we would like to try uh, to see what will be the changes in terms of beauty behavior. So we did survey to internal employee and it turns out that 70% of the respondent mentioned that they reduced the uh, the behavior, the beauty behavior. If you remember, I shared the deck, uh, the slide, about the verbatim that people do in terms of what is changing. So I just re, uh, recap again. So for example, they reduce the the usage of the, for example, lipstick or uh, and increase perhaps more focus on eye cosmetic and perhaps uh, use transfer uh, resistance if someone use makeup and some people actually do DIY to fight with the boredom. So for example, DIY nail polish or hair coloring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. sure. I, I still remember you mentioned that uh, there is some uh, disruption on yes. the beauty routine, right? It's yeah. very yeah. clear. Yeah. Yeah. Because of these adaptations. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. It's very clear and we have come to the end of Q&A session. Thank you to all presenters for pro- providing the answers. We still have quite a long list of questions. However, due to time limit, so we will follow up the remaining question via email. Now, uh, allow me to wrap up and sharing a closing summary in the next slide. We have seen what has happened to the consumer during the COVID-19 and we can conclude that we need to keep up with the consumers, although they have new habit, new mindset, and new expectation. Essentially, there are three key takeaway messages from today's webinar. Number one, there have been shifting during the COVID-19 era in terms of consumer attitude and behavior, such as become more health and safe conscious. And then also there are some implementation of social distancing and the rise of indoor activities. The Indonesia consumer are now adapting health standard into daily life and this will remain for an important consideration in the future. The shifting also happens at the point of purchase, which we can see from the rise of online traffic. While for the product, product with greater relevance to health and hygiene for consumers will be more prioritized than others followed by a relevant product key message. Number two, this shifting can create some potential opportunities which are new product and service categorized, such as clean beauty, for example, touchless format, immunity booster, and so on. And for the home service, it's a part of the example of new service categorized. It is time for the beauty business to innovate by introducing something new and refreshing and be a game changer. The other opportunity is in the marketing channel where e-commerce and online interactive channel will play a big role. Brand must embrace the online market better to connect with the consumers. We also note the need to tap the new consumer habit due to the increased trend of self-care and pampering. Number three is the most important one. It's about the way forward. Firstly, to understand what matters the most for consumers, health and hygiene is obviously a new baseline moving forward. The beauty business would need to reinvent its relevant product and key message into a combine of beauty, health and well-being attributes. Brands who've been able to reposition themselves 
based on the new values around health will be likely more acceptable as they demonstrate understanding to the consumer needs and showing empathy to the consumers. Furthermore, brand can leverage technology to make connection with consumers beyond stores and play the role in the consumer's life. It is also important to stay connected with the consumers through online interactive platforms such as virtual consultation or live streaming event at social media. This can bring the brand directly into the consumer home. And last but not least, is to serve the new habit of consumer. We could create home product kit and complement them with DIY tutorials and information. With this slide, I'm closing this webinar. Once again, I would like to thank to all the speakers for very insightful presentation. And to all audience, thank you for your participation and highly appreciate to your enthusiasm and valuable questions. See you in the next webinar. Stay safe and healthy. Now I will hand over this session to MC. Over to you, MC. Thank you, Ms. Dewey. Before we end today's webinar, we would like to ask all participants to fill out the polling questions displayed on your screen as follows. Do you think this webinar provides information and benefits for you? Do you think the speakers have submitted information in accordance with the theme of this webinar? If we will make the next webinar, will you participate again? We appreciate your participation. Don't forget to follow our social media for more information. Cosmo Beauty Indonesia Instagram at Cosmo Beauty Indonesia, Cosmo Beauty Indonesia Facebook at Cosmo Beauty Indonesia, and www.cosmobeautyasia.com slash Indonesia slash. Presentation material will be sent to your email registered two weeks after the webinar. Lastly, thank you to the moderator and all speakers for the expertise and information. Hope today was beneficial for all of us. If you missed part of the webinar, don't worry as a recorded of this webinar will be available on Cosmo Beauty Indonesia Facebook. Thank you for participating in today's webinar and we hope to see you again in the next Cosmo Beauty Indonesia webinar. Stay safe and healthy.